Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.O. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Friday, October 18th. And this is our weekly video. We'll take a look back at uh, see what went on on eBay last week and over at Catawiki and what's coming up and all the general news. One of the things I had mentioned uh, to you folks a few weeks ago was that we were thinking of adding some stuff onto the website um, uh, as a subscriber section. And uh, we've, we've developed some templates, and this is a part of what we were, we're working on building out on the site. This will be a, a, a uh, we're going to have to make it a paid subscription service because the cost of doing this has been rather breathtaking. But um, we're, we're going ahead with it. It's going to be a couple of bucks a month. So if you want to do it, uh, we'd love to have your company, but we have to pay off the software we had to buy. At any rate, this is what the, uh, the landing page is going to look like for it. And down below will be a series of boxes from the major auction houses, live auctioneers, Invaluable, Bid Square, Bottoms, Christie's, and Sotheby's. And we've laid out some, um, uh, some template pages to give you an idea of what they'll look like. And this would be the page that we've set up tentatively for uh, live auctioneers. And on it will be active auction items that they have currently, and you can scroll down and uh, pick them out. And these are all things that we're going to hand select for the site. You won't have to do uh, any of the hunting anymore. We'll do it for you. And the same thing over here on Bid Square. Their site looks will look just the same, um, but with different things on it, obviously. And just come down. You can scroll down the page. Uh, all pretty good stuff. We were very happy to see what we could find over there with a little digging around. And we've also set up a site for the for Sotheby's, and it will look like this with upcoming sales. These are some things that are coming up in November that we put in here temporarily to see if this uh, 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 these pages work properly. And so far, they work really well, and they'll link you right over to Sotheby's if you want to uh, take a look at the item just that quick you're now on Sotheby's all right and uh, ditto for uh, live auctioneers here's the bottoms page they have a Japanese sale coming up so we had some fun setting us up yesterday and uh, these will all be linked to one another so while you're in there you can go through live auctioneers and valuable bid square and so forth and uh, if they don't have anything coming up, we'll just put some uh, news and post past auction results on there for you to look at. And as soon as new auctions come up, they'll be added. <clears throat> okay, now let's see what else is going on. Um, and I'll, I'll give you more information. These pages have not been launched yet because we're still working on the, uh, on the integration for sign-up forms and that kind of thing. But it should be done within the next couple of weeks. And when it's done, we'll do a video about it and explain what we're doing. And I think it's going to be very, I think you're going to like it a lot. It's going to, it's basically going to save you a lot of time. All right. Now, over here, back over to the regular eBay stuff. It was a pretty good week. Uh, flip over here. There was this, the big um, Lotus uh, Form Famille Rose Bowl. I thought it was pretty terrific. I thought this was a really nice bowl. Uh, beautifully painted, good colors, uh, 19th century, but nice, nice quality. And uh, in the end, it did very well. It brought $4,665. This was about a 10-inch bowl or so, but uh, beautifully painted. Just a great example. And then over here, there was this. This was sort of a nice buy for the week. There was Ming, Ming uh, sort of provincial wares, late, late uh, uh, 1600s and so forth, or, or I mean early, uh, late 1500s and so forth. They've been very reasonable lately. This was a nice little bowl with a foo lion on it floating in clouds. And it went, I think, for a modest amount of money, $124. That was a, that was a nice buy if you like early, early blue and white. And then over here, you had this, this nice looking 18th century solid on ground uh, sleeve face with the uh, undergrays blue and red. Uh, this was a nice one. It had a couple of chunks out of the rim up here, um, which is not uncommon on these, but it does impact the value a little bit. And uh, this, this went for $1,065. This was a seller who's not on here a whole lot, Laxy, uh, but when, when they, they come on, they're in, the, they're in the, the UK. They usually have nice things. We we're glad to see them selling. All right. And then over here, another nice Famille Rose Bowl. This was a good one. It had precious objects all over it. And I like the fact that it was left rimless. It has no borders. It's just floating elements of incense burners, precious objects, drums, Buddhist banners, and all that kind of thing. This was a nice one. And uh, it did fine. It brought $363, which is not a lot of money for a bowl this, like this. I thought it was a, a, a good buy. But... Uh, that's the way it goes. Nice looking thing, though. And then moseying on over here. This was, I put this in the newsletter, and, and unfortunately, they were unable to show a picture of the foot rim of this because it was attached to a stand. And I think that was a mistake. Here's a detail of the foot, of the base on this. All right. 
and there's as you, as everybody knows, there's a lot of fakes of these floating around. This was not a fake. This was a nice 19th century gi type uh, crackleware base. Uh, here's the finish on it. Uh, I actually saw one, and I tried to go back and find it. I couldn't find it again. A virtually identical one that was on a Christie's uh, Kensington sale a few years ago that I think went for about $1,800, as I recall. But this had a very nice glaze to it. Unfortunately, it had been lamped out probably, judging by the stand, probably back in the 1930s or something. But uh, nice looking, nice looking glaze on it, nice looking piece. And uh, look at this, it went for a bargain, 160 bucks. That was a great, great deal. Um, if sometimes if, if, you, if they don't show a picture, good shot of the bottom, you can get a good enough idea by looking at a side shot of the foot down here at the bottom, at the very base. And when you see the glaze sticking out like that and nice and even, uh, and, the and the crackle is this tight and this fine, um, you, you're probably looking at an old piece, right, especially in that shape, that particular shape. But $160 was a bargain. The vase was around 10 inches tall without the lamp fixture. All right, and then on to these, these late Ming um, uh, mold decorated uh, 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 vases. Uh, these, these are fairly provincial, as, as many of you know. They were often done in several colors. These were just done in blue, and uh, they've been banged around a little bit and all that. But I like them. I, I, I like these later Ming pottery pieces. Here's a good picture of the bottoms. That's exactly how they should look sort of mucked up, quickly trimmed, and then fired. And uh, these went for just $349. Not bad. Not bad price at all for those. They're very pretty. And they're interesting. They're very tactical, tactile looking. And then over here to the fan. This was a, a really nice pen and ink with colors uh, that was done on this uh, gilt uh, treated ground with all these little speckles. But the uh, facial expressions on the uh, on the elder here uh, was just beautifully done with the uh, unusually attenuated fingers and the long whiskers and the and the and the expression in his eyes, with his attendant looking up uh, sort of um, timidly. We'll put it that way. Anyway, this was a nice nice fan, and it ended up bringing two thousand and sixty dollars, which is a very decent price for that and uh, not an overpayment. It's a good painting. It's a good looking painting. And then uh, back over here, a nice piece of rose mandarin. This is a little covered uh, uh, serving dish. Uh, very small, but nicely painted, circa 1850. Uh, good, good colors and in good condition. And it went reasonably, 19250 If you like really good 19th century Famille Rose, these mandarin export pieces are a great buy, especially the ones made up to about 1850 um, you know, in, in, in the first half of the 19th century. Those are the better quality ones, typically. All right, and then on to this. This was a bargain. This this was that nice little Kangxi slab constructed uh, uh, Amari uh, Chinese Amari tea caddy with a later um, uh, edition, probably uh, with that accepted a, a metal cover to seal up the seal up the tea. And uh, here's a picture of the bottom. Very nice looking little pot. I didn't see anything really wrong with it, and. Um, had a nick out of the shoulder here, but that was about it. That's actually a pretty easy fix because it's in a white area. And uh, it went for just $66, all right? So I always say, leave a bid, all right? That should have probably brought two to 300 uh, pretty comfortably. Um, but somebody wasn't paying attention, and uh, that was it. And he should have said Kang Shi Amari, not just 18th century, because it was a Kang Shi example. All right, leave a bid, all right? Put it on your watch list then leave a bid, and then you have them in both places, and you'll get the regular notifications from eBay. It'll really help save you some, some, some lot missing out on things. And then there was this, a very nice 19th century Famille Rose Mandarin vase with the lotus, uh, lotus uh, uh, mouth on the top, lotus rim. These are sort of unusual. They, they first were done in the 18th century during the Qianlong period. Uh, with, with the, uh, they took into account these lotus rim uh, bowls. It's as though the bowl was incorporated into the top. They're rather unusual. And uh, this one didn't bring a lot. This was actually quite a nice buy, $475. Not too bad at all. And then over here to the bronze, this uh, Yuan de Ming, probably Ming Dynasty uh, uh, bronze with uh, dragon uh, dragon handles on it. Nicely done. It looked like it might have had a little a little dent there or something going on right there. There it is. Yeah, a small dent. Those can actually be tapped out by a reasonably skilled uh, metal guy. Uh, they, they can heat these up from the inside and just push that right out, and that, that little dent will go away. 
All right, here's a nice detail of it, and the are going to get that little bend in the foot will be easily straightened out, okay? Uh, bronze is a very workable metal, and if you know somebody who knows how to work metals, they can, th this kind of thing, they, they're quite easy to fix. And uh, this went for $796, which was a pretty reasonable buy for a very, very early uh, bronze. Nice looking thing. Unfortunately, the guy oiled it. I suspect he oiled it because he thought it would photograph better. You don't need to oil your bronzes. Just use good light. All right, and then over here, another rose mandarin, um, uh, a rose medallion uh, uh, vase with trimmers and uh, foo lines running down the neck and the shaped foliate rim mouth and the whole bit. It's got everything. It hadn't been drilled. Nice looking vase. And it went for $410. And this was about 14 inches tall, 15 inches tall. Wasn't a huge one. All right, as we all know, once they get over 20 inches, the prices go up a lot, especially in the 24 to 30 inch range. They triple very quickly in value. And then this, this was a nice, nice uh, 19th century uh, vase, uh, popular pattern with the inscriptions and Mandarin figures on it and Famille Rose. And uh, it ended up doing very well. It brought $5,264. All right, these have come into an enormous demand with uh, uh, collectors and dealers lately because the, the, the Chinese market just loves them because of the inscriptions. And um, these used to be pretty much on a par uh, dollar-wise dollar, dollar -wise with just traditional mid-19th century rose medallion bases. These sold for practically the exact same amount. These have skyrocketed in value because they fit the Chinese taste. And uh, the Chinese typically don't buy much rose medallion or rose mandarin or that sort of thing. And here's another pair of these vases. These are nice looking. Pairs of these are always desirable. This one has inscriptions on it. And uh, they ended up going for $1,699. Again, another well-known type of 19th century uh, porcelain, uh, good colors and so forth. And we've had several pairs of these in the last uh, couple of months come up on here. And they always seem, they're all bringing sort of that same range, $1,400 to $2,200, depending on the quality. Okay, and then over here, a, another pair of slab construct uh, rose mandarin, or actually these are just, yeah, rose mandarin bases, uh, again with gilded foo lines running down the neck, but very nice form, rather an unusual form, and uh, nice looking uh, bottoms on them, there's the foot rims, the way they should look, sort of gray and gritty and uh, that, that 19th century uh, texture to them. And here's a side shot of them with the gold Greek key borders, which you see on typically on the better pieces, especially on serving pieces and so forth. And uh, these did okay. They brought $526. They were about a little over a foot tall each, which I think is, a, I think is right in the ballpark. Nice looking, nice looking pair of vases, and they were good buy. And then over here to this uh, 18th century uh, 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 Yongchen to Qinlong period uh, dish uh, with the pagoda in the background. It's a popular scene. You see this scene fairly often. It's almost like a stock pattern that they used. It had a little fritting and a nick on the rim here. Here's a picture of the foot, exactly the way it should look. Um, these feet can either be fairly straight or they can be slightly slanted, wedge-shaped running around and you notice that there's this broad area of unglazed foot rim um, which is typical on these and uh, this did uh, pretty well um, it brought uh, $73.19 the reason I say pretty well is it had a hairline in it and as you know hairlines have a, a very dilatorious effect on value without the hairline this would have brought about $350 uh, but with it uh, you could take off pretty quickly about about 80 percent of the value somewhere in there all right that's the price of a chip or a nick or a hairline. All right, and then over here, this uh, very nice pair of framed um, uh, 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 framed wall hangings with the pleaks of uh, vases and precious objects and so forth on it. These were uh, all done in, uh, uh, probably in hard stones. They look like jades. I'm not sure that they were jades. There's no way to tell from photos. Um, if they were jades, this was the bargain of the week. I assume that was just colored hard stones, but beautifully done, 19th to early 20th century. Beautiful looking carved stands on them. They'd been off and reattached. You can see there's some glue residue here. I've had these before. They do tend to fall off and you end up putting them back on. But the carving was very nice, nice late 19th century carving. And uh, these did very well. They brought $7,490. Uh, but but uh, they're fairly unusual, and usually by the time you see them today, they're missing so many pieces they're not worth hanging up. These, these both appeared to be quite complete. 
and then on to the, uh, the, the molded-shaped uh, kung shi dish with a phoenix in the center and monkeys running around the rim. This is a, a well-known form. They made them in five, six-inch dishes. They made them in huge chargers up to, up to around 20 inches. And uh, this was a nice-looking one, uh, and it did, it did pretty well, but not great. It brought $236, which is a very reasonable buy, and um, that's just the way it goes sometimes. Here's a picture of the back of it. All right, pretty typical. Now, on to this. Another, uh, uh, this was a, a nice first half of the 19th century uh, uh, Mandarin dish. And I like the gilded rim on this. I like the way they did the gilded work with the light blue against it, framing uh, objects going around. And then you have a nice central scene, terrace scene open to the outdoors, very classical, sort of that idyllic Chinese life that we talk about sometimes. Here's somebody who uh, looks like a teacher. He's got his ruler out or a pointer or something. He's instructing. And uh, there it is. And the gilding on this was in nice shape, too. So in the end, this did pretty well. It brought $339. And I've noticed this lately, that a lot of these first half of the 19th century plates that are of, of decidedly better quality most of the time than the second half of the 19th century, um, there's been a bit of traction in these things, these little plates. Um, are, are bringing pretty much the same uh, prices if they're well done as Chin Lung export dishes of, this, you know, of, of similar quality. They're sort of catching up. I don't know what that's about, but we'll keep an eye on it. And then over here to the spoons. We actually had the inqui an inquiry on these spoons um, uh, by the person before they listed them. Um, and I thought they were really nice. I liked the fact that they had, the, uh, had serpent handles on it. Um, like this, like dragon handles. Here's a better shot of it, which is quite unusual. Typically, they just have either just an, a, a blank terminus on the end or rue heads or something else. And this is uh, done with it. They shape the tip into the form of a dragon on each one. Nicely done. Uh, the backs have the typical spur marks from how they're when they're fired, so they don't get stuck to the bottom of the kiln. And little little clay little clay stands, and then they snap them off. And that's what that is. But this was a pretty set. And it was complete, um, and uh, they were all in good shape, and they brought $305, which is a perfectly good price. But they were nice. They were nicer than most of the spoons you see floating around. Very attractive. All right. And that sort of finishes it for the week. And I want to take a look now and see what's coming up. We're going to take a look over at uh, Catawiki and eBay. Um, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe. Give a thumbs up here if you like these videos uh, and uh, leave a comment. Come over to Bid Amount and sign up for the newsletter, and you can see what we you can see what we talk about each week before we before before they sell. Uh, the idea is that you get to go in and see what we've picked out, and um, maybe get something for yourself. All right, and now on to this is nice looking pair of bottle vases. Uh, these are coming up on uh, let's see these close in one day, 20 hours. So they close on Sunday. Um, they're up to 1,323 dollars. Very attractive pair of blue and white bottle vases. Good deep dark blue on them. And also this pitcher, another early, early pitcher, Kung Shi period, uh, with a big handle on it. A lot of these turned up in Europe. These were popular export items, these ewers. And uh, this one has uh, a few days to go. It just went up the other day. It's, it's got eight days to go. And that will be on the, uh, on the newsletter page at the bottom with the rest of the Katawiki material this week. And then on to this, this very nicely painted. Look, the cobalt on this, this plate is about as good as it gets. Uh, very deep cobalt, very precisely drawn with uh, cartouches around the outside of precious objects. And then in between them are, are, are panels of flowers. And then you have a very nice central landscape scene with really good shading. Really good cobalt blue shading right up into the cavetto. And what's interesting here is that the uh, you'll notice that the outside cartouches run down into the cavetto, which is a bit unusual. Typically, where the cavetto begins here, this rim between here and the bottom of the bowl, they add a border pattern or do something else. And in this case, they didn't. They just had the landscape of the flowers go right down into the bowl. They had the, the, the precious objects go right down into the center of the bowl as well. Make, it's rather unusual. All right. And this. Uh, uh, plate has what a day and 20 hours to go it's um, it's got no bids yet which is kind of surprising this is a pretty nice looking dish and uh, what's the condition on this thing fair condition hold on maybe this is why it has a hairline and some fritting well all right but still should have a bid anyway because the color is so good on this thing and it's it's uh, of good size how big is this thing it's about eight inches it's nice looking 
And uh, then over here, there's another piece on there, which is this nice one Lee piece. Good looking plate. It's around uh, nine or 10 inches in diameter, I think, something like that, 29 centimeters. Excuse the fire truck coming by. <laughs> Never fails, I do these in the, we have the windows open because it's nice here and fire trucks come along. All right, now, uh, this has a few days to go yet, eight days, and that'll be on there this week. Here's another one. There's a, quite a bit of Wan Lee material. If you like Wan Lee dishes, uh, check Catawiki this week. There's quite a bit of it on there. A lot of, as always, they always have 18th century stuff. But sometimes they have a lot of uh, uh, early 17th and late 16th century stuff, too. And then that Kendi. This was featured on the uh, on the newsletter page last week, uh, last Sunday. It's got a uh, day and 20 hours. It ends Sunday. It's up to 1,378. I expect it'll probably go up to 1,800 to 2,200 or so before it's finished, depending how much people love it. And then over here on eBay is a nice big pair of Celadon ground with underglazed blue and Famille Rose enamel vases, again with shaped rim. This one has a nick out of one side, so take that into account. But good colors all the way around. And uh, there's also this. There's a, this has a big fret coming out of the side of the spout, but that's a nice transitional period uh, uh, pot. I'm not sure what the, uh, is that just a close up? There we go, okay, yeah. And there's a fret on this side of it, so you might wanna get those tended to but this is a nice looking genuine transitional period pot. And uh, it's up to $510 or $654 rather. Uh, this is a seller over in the UK, closes on Sunday. That will be in the newsletter this week, as will this robe. This robe just went up last night. It's a very nice, um, I think very dark blue robe with um, Famille Rose. Could be black, I can't tell from the pictures. It's up to $204 with nine days to go. And then this, this is our friend Steve up in, uh, in uh, he's in Newport, New Hampshire. And this is a very, very pretty um, rose mandarin um, meat platter. You notice it's got, the, it's got the drain slots in the middle. This is a big platter. I think this thing is probably 18 or 19 inches long. Yes, let's check. Uh, 15 inches, oh, it's a small meat platter. That's even better, it's unusual that size. Most meat platters of this shape are 18 or so inches. This is a small one, this is like for a small roast. And here's a picture of the bottom of it. Nice heavy glaze, lots of good orange peel on there. Painted in probably about 1840. It's up to $787 and it ends tomorrow, Sunday. And onto this, this nice Femi Ver. Um, uh, this is a section obviously from a sweet meat set, but nice looking uh, thing. And it's up to 1350 if you want to own a nice piece of Kung Shi. Um, this might be a pretty good buy. It's got a little few condition error issues, but a rather unusual pattern. And then over here is, is this pair of uh, vases by Clay and Brush. Famille Rose. No, it's one vase. Excuse me. She's just showing two sides. Beautifully done. It's up to $510 with uh, two days to go. All right. And that's about it for the week. Um, we're working on the expansion of the site, and as you saw, we have some interesting things that we're planning on doing. And I hope you like the layout. I think it'll work very well. And uh, we've been getting the software all installed, and it should be done, as I said, within the next couple of weeks. And we'll talk more about it when the time comes. All right. Have a great weekend. Thanks for watching. See you next time.